In this series of short movies, I'm describing nine elements of authentic learning environments for use in schools, universities or other educational and training contexts. In this movie, I'm going to discuss the element of expert performance. Expert performance means that you provide students with access to expert thinking and the modelling of processes. So you provide students with access to the way an expert would think and act. Somebody who is used to operating in the environment, how they move around in it and what they actually do when they're performing the task. To, you provide access to learners at various levels of expertise. Uh, we know that sometimes students learn best from someone whose knowledge is only a little bit more advanced than their own because often the expert, the true expert, has really forgotten the steps that they've got taken to get to that point. Uh, it provides opportunities for the sharing of narratives and stories. So expertise is built up in a context. For instance, if you think about a hairdressing salon or a teacher's staff room, stories are being shared all the time about how we perform in our roles. And expertise is increasingly distributed in the age of the internet the, the small, a small knowledge of many different aspects of a particular topic can be much more useful than any one single expert view. But we do have access to much expert opinion now through technology. I want to give an example of this uh, by showing you uh, the, the diary of Samuel Pepys, which is a, a website. Uh, it's run by Phil Gifford. Every day... Uh, you uh, send uh, an email or you can uh, subscribe to the RSS, but every day you get one entry in Samuel Pepys' diary. Uh, and the diary covers some really significant events in the English history in London, the plague of 1665, the Great Flower of London and the coronation of Charles II, and just to name a few. But the diary site is so interesting because every day you get uh, the, the entry itself. Uh, this is quite a short entry. Sometimes they're a bit longer than this. You notice that there's lots of hyperlinks there. So you can go in and you can, you can look up, for instance, the Duke of York is underlined there as a link. You can go in there and find out about the Duke of York. Um, you can find out about the weather on that day uh, back in, this is 1667. Uh, you can look at other diaries and historical records that were kept at that time. Uh, but uh, under annotations, you'll, you'll notice that people uh, send in their own annotations on just this day's entry. And what people do, there's a variety of types of expertise that are brought to bear on this single entry. So people who will be able to provide information about the background story. Um, sometimes it's not simply um, uh, uh, information of an academic kind of nature. Sometimes people will write up that scene, a scene that's described in the diary as a short play, for instance. Um, sometimes people will talk about the personalities in there and give advice to Samuel Pepys about what he should or shouldn't do now. You know, just the whole variety of, of expertise that is uh, brought to bear on this site. And then there's a whole range of other resources on the website. For instance, you can have a look. Somebody is assessed, well, what, what about his home? You know, what were the different rooms in the home? So somebody's done that. Another has actually recreated the places that he lived in um, in London in a walk, uh, Samuel Pepys walk through the city of London. So you can you can follow that and see where he lived and and where he he went on a daily basis. And others have created music, you know, significant events in his life. They've made that into into music. So in a situation like that, you would say, well, who is the expert? There's so many different ways that you can look at it. With all the comments and all the links, you get so many different perspectives that simply would not be possible with a single expert opinion or an expert commentary on the diary of Samuel Pepys. 
So that question, who is the expert? Um, some people have been very critical about this and say, well, it's just the amateurs and that experts have as much to say as idiots. And Keane has called this um, this participatory kind of knowledge the tyranny of the ignorant. Um, and it has also been argued that this shared wisdom of the crowd can be more accurate and insightful than any single expert opinion. So when you are designing a learning environment, if you think about expert performance, uh, perhaps you could ask, well, does the learning environment provide access to expert skill and opinion from a variety of different sources? Incidentally, you won't necessarily provide all those yourself in the learning environment. Does the learning environment allow access to other learners at various stages of expertise? And, for instance, putting people in groups or letting them work with a mentor or that kind of thing will provide that. And are students able to hear and share stories about professional practice? So in the next movie, I'm going to describe the, the next element, which is multiple perspectives.